All right, welcome to another Bonneville special edition of the EV show. It's crunch time once again. This is where uh, we picked up last year with our last build. We have a new build for you. Speed week is next week. We're gonna catch you up to what we've done to the car so far. We've got a new car, right? What we have left to do, what we still have left to do before we go to Bonneville and what we hope to achieve this year. Let's check it out. So this year we have a new car. We're working with our driver, Jim Hoogerhide, and he's got a really special car, the Nebulous Theorem 2. This car was built by Jack Costella, uh, kind of a legendary land speed builder. And the car has been, uh, has gotten a record up to 368. So we know the chassis is uh, worthy of the speed that we're trying to go. Uh, the car should be stable at that speed. We're just basically doing what we do here at EV West. We're doing a conversion on a gas uh, streamliner. So this is fantastic for us. So that's a little bit of the history of the car. Um, our driver is going to be Jim Hoogerhide again. He got the record for us last year. And so um, it's nice to have him involved. In fact, he's been here all week building on the car and just really involved in, in um, the design and the build and the conversion of the car. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, and uh, all these builds are really a lot of fun. We just want people to enjoy this, see what we're doing. Uh, we tend to be a little bit more open with the information than a typical land speed team would be because we just want to get people like super uh, you know interested in the sport and inspired to go out and build a land speed car because uh, i think with our electroliner build last year we showed that it it really wasn't that difficult it was a pretty economical build it was pretty easy uh, we didn't really run into any technical difficulties and uh, and had a fun time inspired a lot of a lot of people on the salt so that was great so we're going to try and do that again this year um, so we've spoken a little bit about the car. Let's talk about the record. So right now, the Buckeye Bullet 3, which is built by Ohio State University, has a record at 314 miles an hour through the SCTA. So that's a two-way record on the salt over a standing mile. Um, their FIA record, which was done under FIA sanctioning instead of SCTA, is 341 and some change. And that's over a uh, standing kilometer both ways. So. Uh, right now, that's the record. That's a really tall. We'd basically have to do 342 to get the world record or 315 to get the SCTA record. And those are both extremely difficult numbers to uh, hit. Uh, but anyways, we're going to have fun. We're going to try and get them. We think it'd be uh, fantastic if a small, small little speed shop and the guys behind me and the crew uh, can put a car on the salt and actually get a world record with the drivetrain that we're doing. Look. Uh... The camera guy tried to get me to kick Ian out, and I said, no, don't let us get in the way. So we're not gonna get in the way. Uh, but I did wanna show you the drive into what we're doing over here. We did do a remote mount system. You see a lot of guys doing this, splitting the Tesla case, split it here. We have our drive gear on here. It's a synchronous drive belt system, the Goodyear Energy or the Continental Silent Sync. And then we mounted the inverter on top, have the cooling pass through. This is basically what's going on on the top end. It's, it's just a, a plate that, uh, Johnny designed, we have an inlet and an outlet on each of the uh, phases of the inverter. So that's what's going on over here. And then when this is hooked up, you have the three phase leads here going down to a junction box at the bottom that's uh, built into our end plate. So when this is all capped up, this just gives you a better idea of what's currently going on and the layout for that. This goes to a couple temperature sensors. We got a bypass on the Deutsch plug. And with this cap on it, it gives us some protection from the salt because that's gonna be a big concern. And, uh, uh, and that will box in nicely. We'll have a wheel well in here. So it's nice to show you some of this uh, probably in the next couple of videos that you're going to see. Uh, all this is really going to be enclosed and you're not going to be able to see much. So you won't be able to see much of the, the drive belts. This belt here goes to an intermediary shaft that's adjustable so we can tension it. And that's where we have our reduction. So that gives us the ability to change our gear ratios, get the perfect ratio for what we calculated, where our peak torque is, what our 
uh, calculated speed that we want to go is. And uh, so hopefully uh, with the right ratio, that will kind of get us in the zone, but this gives us the flexibility to change that if we need to. All right, so the car's a little messy right now, so bear with us, but I just want to show off a few little things that are interesting. Uh, our front wheels are gonna be solid aluminum. At the speed that we're going, with a wheel this small so we can fit it under the body and get good aerodynamic characteristics, the RPM of the wheel would be so high that a traditional tire would separate on us and it's just really tough to find stuff in this size. So uh, this is a solid aluminum disc and this is basically what we're gonna have up front. And you know something like this can go well over 400 miles an hour. So for us, that's not an issue. Um, but it does change, of course, the handling characteristics of the car. Um, you know, you don't have any dampening anymore in the tire. Uh, so it's, uh, I, I'm just gonna call it gnarly. I've never driven a car like this. I can't believe Jim's doing it, um, but he's pumped. And uh, that's what it takes to go that speed. So just wanted to show off that little detail. Um, didn't really mention it before and people might've saw it and said, you know, what's going on up front there? Is uh, there no rubber on the tire and uh, uh, no rubber on the wheel? Nope, that's, that's it. That's a uh, wheel tire and everything right there, so. Up here, we basically have a chain mechanism to a rack, half a rack. Here's our steering mechanism here. This drives the push rod down the rack. Follow it all the way down there. And that gives us about three degrees of steering. And that's lock to lock. It's not much but uh, you, know, you wanna keep it straight, so it shouldn't take much to keep it back in line. Uh, that's the steering. Uh, up here, we've got a ballast uh, storage area, so we're gonna have some ballast to go in there to just put a little bit more weight up front, um, help trim out our weight for the ideal weight that we want. This is a coolant tank, so we have a reservoir here. Uh, we have a big hatch lid on this side. I apologize, it's dirty, the guys are working on it. Um, but that hatch lid lets us dump ice in there. We're not gonna run coolant, we're just gonna run a distilled water and ice system like we did on the Electroliner last year. And that will give us plenty of, uh, plenty of cooling without the need for you know, uh, aerodynamic robbing, radiator, or other dissipation system. Um, over here we got our fire bottles, of course. So we're carrying two 10 pound bottles. We've got 20 pounds on board. And then down here we have uh, a Tesla repurposed coolant pump. So that's gonna drive our coolant right there. We've got a few more things that are come in line. Uh, we've got a flow rate sensor and uh, some other things that are gonna kind of go up here that are neat. And so we'll share some of those details with you and uh, some, of the, some of the data that we're gonna be monitoring this year is gonna be real exciting. Of course, we're partnered again with AEM Electronics and um, we're gonna be doing a lot of fun stuff like we did last year and then you know, put some videos out there, use their fantastic software, the AEM data software, where we can actually do the overlays and give you the data uh, that people want to know about, you know, hey, what voltage are you running at? How much power you guys got? How much volts? Uh, we're going to share that with you guys. All right, so here's the body for Nebulous Theorem 2. Uh, old graphics have been taken off. We're getting ready to put some new graphics on it. We got some new glass on it for our driver. Uh, he actually installed it. We increased the wing and did a couple other little things um, to modify the body to fit with the modifications that we did to the car. Uh, like I said, our chute tubes are going to be a little further out, and there's some other uh, other things that we had to do to make it compatible with the conversion process. Um, besides that, this, you know, this is the body that's done, um, uh, I think about three, 368 is what they got on the numbers. Um, so they probably went a little faster than that at one point. Um, and that's, that's in the zone of what we want to do. The power's kind of in the zone. Um, that was done with a Hibusa uh, turbo. Um, so they were boosting it pretty good. But that's about a 550, 600 horsepower setup, and that's uh, probably about the range that we'll be, make, you know, that we'll be making with our drive system. So, uh, so we'll see. You know, it's going to be real interesting. A lot of this, we just want to um, get the data and share it and let people know, you know, what these motors can do. We're we're super curious. You know, what last year we got a Tesla motor to do 242. Uh, hopefully this year get the motor over 300, and uh, hopefully get a record and go from there. So this is. <laughs> This is our jack shaft mechanism and tensioning system and, and all that stuff. And it's funny because uh, this table was clean and the car was all assembled and then they disassembled everything just to, to paint it. Um, so this is great, you know, like tune back in. You're going to see this stuff assembled in the next video and uh, give you something to look forward to. So thanks for joining us again. Crunch time, Bonneville Salt Flats Speed Week 2021. Join us on the adventure. See you in the next video.